Montana, known for its big sky and its big trout. The skies are as stunning as ever, but all is not well with Montana's trout population. Warmer temperatures are setting off a series of interconnected changes that are affecting Montana. But we begin with the trout. Scientists project that increasing temperatures in the coming decades could cause significant reductions in trout habitat in Montana, placing the more than $300 million fishing industry in jeopardy. I started guiding uh, in out of West Yellowstone in 1980. Craig Matthews is a well-known fishing guide and owner of Blue Ribbon Flies in West Yellowstone. The changes I've seen in the 30 years that I've been here, I've seen a lot of sedimentation in the streams. I've seen lower water, particularly the last 10 or 12 years. The summer drought season in Montana has grown longer. This is the West Fork, and we have a tailwater which kicks out some cool water in the summer that helps with the fishery. Jenny West is a fishing guide on the Bitterroot River near Missoula. She's been fishing the Bitterroot since she was 12 years old. The key is July. If July is dry, then we have a pretty big drought. In addition to the long summer drought, the winter snowpack is melting earlier. And the big trend that we've identified in the last 50 years is that we're getting a bit less snow and it's starting to melt on the order of two or three weeks earlier. Steve Running is a professor of ecology at the University of Montana in Missoula and a member of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which was co-recipient of the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize. Trout are what we call simply a cold water species. And so a trout literally dies at water temperatures above about 78 degrees. It's pretty easy to warm up water above 78 degrees if it's just standing still. And so what keeps our water temperatures cool is that snow melt out of the mountains continuing to flow down through our rivers. As our rivers run out of flow and you're left with just sitting pools of water, uh, that 78 degree threshold for trout mortality gets pretty easy to attain. Running calculates that March temperatures in Montana have risen 5 to 7 degrees since the 1950s. As the graph shows, there is natural climate variability, and some years are cooler and wetter, like this year. But the upward trend is unmistakable, a trend that scientists say is consistent with global warming. The final ramification of that is that our late summer stream flows in July and August are just dwindling to lower and lower stream flows. And that's really going to ultimately impact our trout populations and our fishing and tourism. In Montana, that's especially true because water is so integral to the economy. It doesn't matter whether someone's actually, you know, dipping a line in the water and, and catching a fish. It's the restaurant meal equipment guide and the hotel room. There's all that ripple effect. As mayor of Missoula, John Engen knows that healthy fish fuel a whole network of economic relationships that local populations depend on. If you think of the trout in this stream as the canary in the coal mine, if this stream isn't healthy, if it can't support this iconic species of fish and its varieties, can this place support another iconic species, which is the independent westerner? Another effect of warmer, drier conditions is increased wildfires. Wildfire rates are going up dramatically. Insect epidemics are going up dramatically. Fewer sub-zero days in winter allow the voracious pine bark beetles, normally killed off by the winter freeze, to survive into another season. More beetles means more dead timber, making that timber even more combustible, more susceptible to forest fires. Our economy is affected by drought, um, mostly in terms of fire and the toll that fire takes on our collective resources in this state. Droughts have been very much a part of the western United States as far back as we can tell. Roger Pilkey Sr. is an atmospheric scientist at the University of Colorado in Boulder and has studied drought in the west. Whereas many scientists see the climate of the west shifting toward almost permanent summer drought, Pilkey is reluctant to link drought to man-made changes in climate. He sees the looming water crisis as one result of population growth. Multi-decade long droughts have occurred in the past, so regardless of how climates change because of human activity, we have to adapt and we have to mitigate as much as possible to try to reduce their impacts. 
Across Montana, one key adaptation strategy involves finding new ways to use available water more efficiently. But there are competing claims for that water. As they like to say out here, whiskey's for drinking, water's for fighting. We need to really start protecting not only the value of the water, but protection of the use of that water for agriculture. Walt Sales is a fourth generation farmer in the Gallatin Valley near Bozeman. Agriculture contributes $2.4 billion a year to Montana's economy. But over the last decade, less snow melt in the state has reduced stream flow at the time when farmers and trout need it most. Sales values his water rights, but also understands the need to find balance with fishermen. We really like to see people enjoy our natural resources, but we also want that respect, knowing that this is somebody's property and it's a gift to the people of the state. And hopefully that will carry over with the recreationalists and others, and it has. However, Professor Running suggests the conflict is more pronounced than either side lets on. This is a, a real tug of war between the recreationalists wanting water in the river and the landowners that are trying to grow crops to make a livelihood. And yet, we don't have enough spare water to do both. So the day is going to come in 20, 30, 40 years where there's going to have to be less irrigation of crops in order to keep water in the streams. And those landowners will have to go to dry land farming. And I'm sure someone is going to have to compensate them for giving up water rights. It's going to be contentious. The competition for water could get even more contentious if coal to liquids technology, which converts coal to diesel fuel, takes off. Montana has 24% of the nation's coal reserves, and Governor Schweitzer has been a proponent of coal to liquids, emphasizing the economic benefits and downplaying the fact that it is a water-intensive process. We've announced a coal to liquid plant that will be built on the Crow Reservation. That single plant that will employ 2,000 people will use about as much water as a project that has a couple of thousand acres of alfalfa, which would employ three or four people. Governor Schweitzer has allied himself with other Western governors, signing the Western Climate Initiative. Solve it, and we help free America from its addiction to foreign oil. It calls for a 15 percent reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2020 and an increased use of alternative energy. Bottom line, coal has a CO2 problem. And until we recognize and we begin mitigating that CO2 problem, coal could be the energy of the past. Montana is also looking to capitalize on its abundant renewable energy sources, none larger than wind. The strong, steady winds here have the potential to meet the electricity needs of these 19 states. So Montana is hoping for energy independence and economic growth, but not without legislative hiccups. Change is difficult for people. Fundamentally, change scares people. Still, Montanans like Jenny West and Craig Matthews remain optimistic. I hope that I can tell my grandkids someday that, you know, this is, this is what it's like and it's been this way forever. Oh, right there he is. Yes. Woo. You know, this is my life. This is my passion. And uh, I want to be outside as much as I can. My business is counting on it. If we lose trout fishing, we lose the headwaters of such great rivers as the Missouri and the Yellowstone. And we lose those very wild places that trout inhabit. And it's such a rich tradition, wild trout in wild places. People from Montana call their state the last best place, and they cherish their big sky and their big trout. But they also recognize that the climate is changing, and so they're pursuing ways to adapt and to reduce. Some Montanans even say they're setting an example for other states to follow.